Hello and welcome to Newsroom Series today. I'm Alumide McCauley. Thank you so much for joining us. Our focus is the southwest region of the country. But first, our top stories from the south-south. And it's politics, where major political parties involved in the Edo governorship election can now cannot claim innocence of vote buying. That's coming from the executive director of Yaga Africa, Mr. Samson Etodo. He added that voter intimidation may also very was also very visible, and this may have led to the low turnout, and that is, is necessary, but a lot of work will be done in the future to inspire confidence in the people. Who was a guest on our breakfast program, The Morning Brief. All of the parties are complicit, you know, in the infractions that happen in the course of this election. All, at least the major political parties, were all involved in vote buying. If it's out there in the in our midday situational statement, we were very clear and identified local governments where votes were bought for ten thousand naira per voter, and it's really disappointing. You can actually say that the turnout is purchased turnout. You can also say that the choices that they expressed was compromised because it wasn't out of free will. Because in some cases where we observed, you know, vote buying, the whole secrecy of the ballot was not guaranteed. You had mercenaries who sat right in front of the ballot box, right in front of the um, voting cubicle. And when people cast their votes, they display who they voted for, and then they receive, you know, the, the cash. The role that security agencies played in the course of the coalition process and I think that the police needs to thoroughly investigate some of the actions taken by its officers in the course of the results, um, the results coalition. People didn't show up to vote in this election. And that is disturbing because this downward trend really suggests that we have a lot of work to do to continue to inspire confidence on the part of people. We begin our Southwest coverage of Newsroom Series today with residents along the Circular Road corridor in Ibadan, in Oyo State, having staged a peaceful protest at the Oyo State Government Secretariat, expressing their concern over a recent demolition notice issued by the government. The affected residents are demanding a halt to the planned demolition, which threatens to displace them from their homes. The protesters carrying placards called on the state government to reconsider its decision, arguing that many of their properties were legally acquired and have been their homes for years. They expressed their frustration about the lack of prior consultation and the impact this might have on their livelihood. In response to the protests, Governor Shei Makinde has arrived on the scene to address the protesters. The governor listened to their grievances and provided clarity on the government's decision regarding the demolition along the circular road corridor. The Federal Roads Maintenance Agency, FEMA, says efforts are ongoing to ensure the rehabilitation of federal roads in need of repair across Oyo State in the meantime. Now, these efforts, according to the coordinator of FEMA in Oyo State, is to ensure seamless travel for people and product, especially agricultural product, to and from the state. He added that some major gateways to the state capital, Ibadan, currently undergoing rehabilitation at the moment, and we'll move to other parts before the year ends. Idi Anyure and Ogumaki areas of Oluyole local government area of your state are some of the major link roads out of Ibadan, the Oyo state capital, to Ogun state, particularly Ijebudi and adjoining towns. Some of the roads have been in a state of disrepair made worse by heavy rainfall recently. A large chunk of the road has been overtaken by water, 
trapped in the potholes that have greatly widened, making passage for goods and human traffic difficult. Residents and commuters using the road have made calls for repair of the bad portions of the road, and now the Federal Roads Maintenance Agency has come to the rescue. Repair work is ongoing to fix the bad portions of these roads, especially at Ogumaki and Idianure in the local government area. Idianure Ogumaki is a very economical route in Ibadan because it connects all the local farm settlements and also some federal institutions, especially Green, that's Koko Research Institute of Nigeria, to the other state capital, which is Ibadan. That is where most of the farm produce comes from, that's um, more or less um, in charge of uh, reducing the issue of food such shortage. The local government authority in Oluoli and some residents are appreciative of this move. You know, there are certain areas that need immediate attention, and we thank them for uh, coming to our aid and fix the road. When they did it now, we are all happy for what they have done because it really helped us and it made the road to be more convenient for us. The former director adds that efforts are underway to fix the notorious Oyo Ogumosha Road to put an end to loss of lives and property along that axis as a result of the bad portions on the ever busy road. Possibly Ibadoyo Ogumosha Road will be worked upon. Our, F our management are seriously working on it in ensuring that all the bus section within that section have been repaired before the end of the year. So let's be hopeful in this renewed hope agenda of the federal government. Hopefully, more federal roads in need of repair, especially link roads to other communities and states, would also receive some attention before the year ends. Ukolario, Channel Television News. A $5 million e-waste battery recycling company is to be set up in Ogun State by investors in conjunction with the British government. The British High Commissioner in Nigeria, Mr. Richard Montgomery, disclosed this on Wednesday when he led some officials of the commission on a courtesy call to the state governor, Prince Dakwa Abiodu, in his office in Abeokuta. When operational, the e-waste recycling company is expected to bring new technology, create employment opportunities, for the teaming population of the youth. The Ogun State Government and the British Government are working to strengthen the partnership between the two nations. The team. This yeah. visit aims to enhance bilateral relationship and explore investment opportunities. A key topic of discussion is the $5 million recycling project, where Governor Dakwa Piodu expresses appreciation to the British government for its commitment to human capital development and emphasizes the need to further expand economic ties. We are open for business. Uh, uh, we assumed office. We had a vision to partner with others uh, in view of our comparative advantage. So we've been able to increase efficiency in governance. The number of COOs that have issued in the last probably one year is probably more than the number of COOs that have issued in maybe 10 years. Because now we now have uh, an equipment that allows me to just issue, you know, thousands of COOs a day. Following the meeting, the British High Commissioner visits the Olushe Gwanshoba Press Center for a joint press conference where state commissioners for environment, industry, trade and investment, along with other government officials, discuss the e-waste recycling initiative. But with strong UK roots, is bringing not just a new recycling plant, but bringing new technology to deal with a issue which is going to be a growing concern, a growing market, given the solar, uh, the electric vehicles and all the mobile digital technologies that we use, which need lithium batteries, and this technology will help add to the value chain of this market. The Commissioner for Environment assures that the necessary environmental regulation would be put in place for the project. Uh, Ogun State is at the forefront of this when it comes to um, environmental management and uh, ensuring the uh, environmental sustainability governance uh, in this case. And uh, we're doing this with the right policy and I'm going to hand over 
uh, some of our policy guidelines to the, uh, um, the, the British High Commissioner. While we continue to grow as an industrial state, we are concerned with the well-being and the health of our people. So that we will not do this uh, to jeopardize the health of our citizens. Nigeria is one of the largest producers of electronic waste in Africa, generating over 200,000 tons of e-waste annually, much of which ends up in landfills. I and Hinkley um, E-Waste Recycling have taken it upon ourselves to establish Africa's first lead acid and lithium uh, battery recycling plant here in Ogun State, um, supported by Manufacturing Africa uh, and uh, the British, under the British government, uh, and also uh, getting a lot of support, as you can tell, from Organ Invest, who have supported us through this uh, project and uh, investment. The EU Waste Recycling Initiative is expected to increase Ogun State internally generated revenue and significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions. To Lagos State, where the Okobaba Sawmillers Association has applauded Lagos State government for successfully relocating them from Ebutemeta to Agwa, Ikosi, Timberville, Ikosi, Jerry Local Council Development Area, and for the provision of a modern and conducive environment for their businesses to thrive. The president of the Lagos State Mainland Sawmillers Association, Mr. Abdul Ganiyu, Keku commends Governor Babajide Soholu for making the relocation process a reality after several plans by previous administrations. This is the new Okobaba Timberville located in Agbawa Ikosi Ejiri, local council development area of Ikorodu, Lagos. Just as promised by the Lagos state government over four decades ago, the new site seated on 30 hectares of land is now ready for use by the sawmillers, all thanks to the current administration. Because no forget to cover what you do, that is where the business started. But can you, you cannot compare death with living. That's how can term it. Okobaba has become a dead place for us. Even before the, now, uh, we now agree to come here, this place cannot be compared with Okobaba. This place is a very modern international sawmill profession. They built our sawmill jets, they built our offices, they built our even the house that we are going to live. So automatically, this place is a very is a complete industrial harmony for us. The new Okobaba Timberville is equipped with over 200 workshops and offices. 260 housing units, electricity, water facility, amongst other modern facilities, all provided by Governor Sonwolu's administration to make the sawmillers comfortable in their own space. The area at the Butemeta was so porous, we don't have control over the place. Every digger here came there and do whatever they want. Even we don't even have the control of our own business. So that is the situation at the Butemeta. But at Agowa, we could see site, the new site. All these things were provided. We have eight transformers, basically for the operational area alone, without sharing with any community. We have uh, the structure. In the, in the, at the Butemeta, no director office is only this bash is something. But at Agowa, we could see site. We have a block offices, well furnished, with all electricity and whatever. Within this environment, nothing goes to waste. The practice of circular economy has been incorporated here, and the sawmillers are grateful to the Lagos State Government for providing an enabling environment for their business to thrive. There's nothing like a waste, even despite of what they've constructed, that will be converting our sawdust to briquettes. They are even in talks with a Chinese firm that uh, will be using the sawdust to make um, board, all these particle board, all these uh, HDF, NDF boards. So right now, I believe that they are almost at the 100% completion 
of that MOU. With this, we are not going to experience it. That we will not be experiencing losses anymore. And once you are able to curtail your losses in a business, that means your profit margin is, is, is going to be something to write home about. The relocation of these summers from Ibutemeta to Agboa Ikosi is part of the state government's initiative to make it a major agriculture processing zone, as well as a viable hub for the timber and construction industry within the Ikorodu Ekwe sub-region. Welcome back. The Agboyiketu Local Council Development Area has seen significant growth in recent years. Various initiatives aimed at improving infrastructure, education, health care, as well as security, just to name a few. Under the leadership of Chairman Delio Shino, the Council has prioritized sustainable development, focusing on enhancing the quality of life for residents through key projects and programs. Now, as the community continues to grow, questions around youth empowerment, employment opportunities, and public safety remain at the forefront. The local government has implemented several empowerment programs and security measures to ensure that Aguikitsu remains a safe and thriving area for all its residents. Joining us in the newsroom series today to discuss these critical areas is the chairman of Aguikitsu Local Council Development, Mayor Delio Shino where we'll be exploring his administration's achievements, challenges, and future plans to further develop the area. Thank you for coming on Newsroom Series. Thank you for having me again. Now, can you share with us, as we begin, the major infrastructure developments that have happened in Agwayiketu and how that aligns with the needs of the community? Okay. Um, at the exception of my coming in as the executive chairman of Agwayiketu, uh, we actually prioritize what is needed to be done. Um, we realize that infrastructure is very important. At the same time, education and empowerment of, our, of the youth and our women. So we started with infrastructure by focusing on all the access road into our way to coming in from the Todd Milan Bridge inward Alakpere, then inward Ukudu to Alakpere as well, then there's an intersection to Ikurudu Road, to Tipa Garage, Kitsu, Bus Stop, which leads to Demo Road, Ilele, Yano School, and My Chove. So we realize that for us to be, for Agui, people to access Agui Kitsu, they need to have as a good access road. So we started from there. And this is what we have been doing. We've constructed, rehabilitated, we surfaced as many roads as I can count. Um, if I put it together, it should be about close to 70 to 72 kilometers now. That's. I recently, about last month, I rehabilitated about eight roads within two weeks around um, Tipo Garage, Bang Bay Zone, and all that. So we did that. And apart from that, there are also, also reconstruction of roads from Olaiton to Kubade Joe to Alim Street, which is a total construction you know, new drainage system, new uh, uh, street lights, talking about street lights, we're talking about paved road. So these are the things we've been doing. And apart from that, we're creating uh, sport facilities as well, for sports infrastructures, like the one in Nagoya Town and Everyan area, whereby we'll be, we thought we were creating about 180-seater uh, mini stadium. Now we realize that it's about 390. By the time we're installing those seats, we realize that it's a 390 capacity. So we're doing that as well, whereby we're going to have a, a seven aside football pitch, um, which is going to help the youth in, you know, in curbing uh, the restiveness uh, of all the youth. So in, in Ajegunle area, we are also a construction road. We, are, we have our recreational centers there as well. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's also about That's, 400 seaters. That sounds like a lot. Yes. There's about 400 seaters. We have uh, health centers that we have rehabilitated in Ajegunle. We have uh, Kana Clearing. Okay. You know, this is not primarily a local government uh, duty to clear canals. But if you look at the problem we're facing in Lagos, the flooding issue. So we need all this plan ahead. There's a Yearly thing, it's a yearly thing for us that we have to de we have to deceive our canal. We'll dredge it. With the inflation going on, how are you getting the funds 
to pursue these projects so in now, these trying times? Now, when I came on board, I, we look at our comparative advantage, realize that we need to invest in real estate. So from the real estate, we're also generating funds from there. Aside from also, the local government apart, allocation. Apart from the local government allocation. Okay. So we are meticulous in our spending. So whatever we want to do, especially when our, our revenue our allocation has gone up, so we need to invest in our infrastructures. We need to invest in our people. This is what we are doing. So across all board, in terms of education, inf education, education infrastructures, we're doing that. Uh, in terms of health, we're doing that. All the necessary infrastructure that all these sectors are required. I was, was going to jump into education now, yeah. but before I do that, you know, most Nigerians know who their governors are. All, we know who our governors are yeah. because that obviously is the number one man in the state. Not many people you find hard pressed know who the local government chairman or the LCDA's yeah. uh, chairman are. Yeah. are. Are you pursuing a closer relationship with the people in your communities where people know that this is the man in charge? Do you have an open door policy? When people in your community have problems, are they able to see you? Yes. Um, uh, there's a feedback mechanism that we've created through the CDC. Okay. And apart from that, there's no... I don't have a, uh, a period that's dedicated for people to see me. So you're free to come to my office anytime. You know, normally you said, oh, this is a visiting time. There's nothing like visiting time in my office. Well, this is, you can visit my office at any time. As long as I'm in the office, you visit me. Then I go to the office Monday to Friday to attend to my people. I walk around. They know me in Agwe too. I can walk around without me, without anyone escorting me. And they know me. Right. This is the relationship I've created uh, in, in, within the LCDA. Now, in terms of uh, upgrading the school facilities, we talked about education just yeah. now. Yeah. What's happening there? So we've been doing a lot, you know, providing furniture, rehabilitating schools, okay. uh, changing uh, the roof where uh, there's need for us to build new toilets, for, there's need for us to demolish old buildings and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, develop another one. This is what we've been doing. So we're about to start about uh, eight classrooms in Agboye town, a Ryan area whereby it's going to be an ultra-modern school in that community. We've actually we just recently completed another innovation in Agui 2. So Agui 1 will be receiving another one. So we're just waiting uh, for the technical uh, details to be completed before we move to the site. So it is very important for us. We're, su we're supporting them in, in providing GCE forms, JAM forms. We've provided scholarship, for free, bursaries. For, for free, subsidized. Yeah. Yes. No, 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 we're free, for free. So you don't need to Great. pay for that. So residents of Agwe to yes. who have wards or children yes. who are going to sit for jam yeah. can have access to they can have access, yes. their their it's jam limited. Forms. It's, it's limited. Okay. You know, we can we can't cover everyone. Okay. But whatever we can do based on our budget and our income. So the last one we did was about the last one we did is was about two hundred uh, GCE form. We've done five hundred, we've done uh four hundred, we've done three hundred. So it all depends on the fund available. As of that time, okay. So, but this is what we are we've been doing continuously for the last seven years. What about security? Yes, um, we recently we had uh, it's in and out, but presently it's relatively peaceful. Uh, we, we have been supported by the security agencies. We've been providing them logistics and all that. Uh, there, there are some court issues recently, but I can tell you today we've actually nipped it. So, uh, we get to relatively peaceful. We thank you so much for coming on Newsroom Series and taking out the time to be with us on the developments in Agwe Yiketu. And we certainly wish you uh, continued success thank you very in the development of the area. Thank you. From there to Ondo State, where the governor, Lokaye Datua, is tasking political parties, stakeholders in the state to ensure good conduct and also ensure they play by the rules in the forthcoming local government elections in the state. The governor stated this while declaring open a two-day training organized by the Ondo State Independent Electoral Commission for leaders of political parties taking part in the local government elections. Represented by his deputy, Mr. Alaide Adelami, who revealed that the state government is committed to supporting the electoral umpire with the needed resources to perform its statutory duties effectively. As you are aware, our dear state is also inching towards an off-season gubernatorial elections slated for 16th November 2024. 
according to election timetable of the Independent uh, National Electoral Commission, this election will come up before the local government elections. In both cases, we must urge all political gladiators and stakeholders to conduct our election, electioneering activities peacefully and commit to free and fair election. And that's it on Newsroom Series today. Thank you for watching. I'm Alumide Mukali. Yeah.